What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Star Wars. There seems to be no discussion or announcement regarding films other than people now wanting to move forward with making a Star Wars film. Kevin Feige's rumored movie has been, uh, well, the movie that he was told that he would be doing, or he said that he would be doing, is no longer in play. Patty Jenkins' movie. Um, We knew for some time that wasn't going anywhere. Um, David Lindelof, he um, wrote a script. He handed it in. He quit. Brian, what's going on? I seem to think, Brian, that, and there's something that he mentioned, Lindelof. Do you think there is a shortage of people with, not courage, but that's that, that they don't want to go all in? And, because, I mean, I guess you have to go all in when you're making a film, but dedicate a, 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 themselves to a film that could possibly ruin their careers make their lives miserable because fans out there if you don't get it right is 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 this hell to pay brian what are your thoughts on that on that uh theory it's fascinating the state of this ip that they cannot get a single cinematic project to the theater uh i mean on the one hand i think the Kevin Feige project being canceled makes some sense to me. That was Michael Waldron was going to write it, but like right now, Marvel's cold, and Kevin's got enough problems on his on his main plate. And he's trying so, to be number one. And yes, I do believe, <laughs> or number he's going to be number two. <laughs> but, number one. I still think that's going to happen, and, and we'll stay tuned for that. So yeah. that one makes sense. Patty Jenkins, we know that was a creative differences issue. That was Patty Jenkins being Patty Jenkins, and mm. you know we we've heard we've seen it. Wonder Woman three, Thor two. I mean, this has happened before with her. I actually thought the Rogue Squadron idea sounded really interesting. I would love to have seen an aerial combat movie, you know, in the Star Wars verse. But, you know, I, I mean, at the end of the day, if they, they don't want to move forward with the idea, then, then it is what it is. Mm-hmm. The Lindelof one, I think you hit on it. It's like it almost felt like his heart wasn't in it. Like he kind of took the he took the advance or took the money and he's like, all right, I got to put something together. But he's like, I don't really want to be connected to this. And so you're kind of the only thing that's left on the board is something that I'm dreading, quite honestly, which is Taika Waititi Star Wars, where the only thing we've heard is that he apparently is making himself a major supporting character in the story, which to me has, you know, a cross between Korg and Jar Jar Binks written all over it. So I don't really have any interest in that. And I don't know if that's going to make it um, to the theater. We'll see how that goes. So it's just fascinating to me. I think you're absolutely right. I think this dates back to the last Jedi that the toxicity of the response to that movie continued to pollute what became, you know, last uh, rise of Skywalker being this, really ham-handed attempt to make everyone happy and then no one was happy the cast coming out afterwards and basically swearing this off and washing their hands of the whole situation and and instead of celebrating the end of their trilogy were basically expressing the regrets that they were involved in this and having to kind of defend what they did so yeah yeah, i think the ip is pretty toxic when it comes to movies now it's weird that like it's somehow safely insulated by Favreau and Filoni with regard to the Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's really only the Mandalorian because we saw that same toxicity rear its head in Mm Obi-Wan. So it is weirdly like there's this one pocket that's okay. And then everything else, it just seems like you can do no right. Yeah. And I don't really know how you solve that other than time. Like, I don't know how you get away from that other than just saying we're not going to do anything Star Wars for a while. But meanwhile, it's going to be five years with no film as of next year already. Yeah. And that seems almost impossible to conceive of, you know, when you think back 10, 10 years ago. But I don't know. I, I'll be interested to see if how Ashoka is received. I'll be interested to see how this um, High Republic is received. Um, or was it the Acolyte? Sorry, that's yeah, yeah. the Acolyte. But, you know, even like Andor, which we thought was amazing, 
the audience was kind of middling for that, ultimately. And now we come to find out the Mandalorian ratings are down 20% for season three over season two. And I think season three is off to a really compelling start, mm. but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe is the, is the, I mean, we talk about superhero fatigue. Like, is the Star, Star Wars, Wars fatigue just dying? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It seems like it i think people's appetite is for something different other than these superhero type superhero type right doesn't necessarily have to be mcu dcu it can be superhero type situations fantasy things i mean game of thrones is certainly still thriving um did that... there's there's fan toxicity there too the reaction to the final season of that show became a huge huge issue yeah i i don't know brian i think people are just sort of going back to the roots of just making films no one has ever heard of instead of trying to adapt something that there is a huge fan base and then people coming out not liking it and then your life is ruined <laughs> right yeah. so uh interesting but i i also think too i mean we keep waiting for kathleen kennedy to be to exit or be exited <laughs> and i kind of feel like at so i mean who else who else is going to take the fall for this that they can't get a star wars movie made we're hearing that the tracking and interest in Indiana Jones Five is terrible. Like, those are her, those are her projects. Yeah. And like, Disney cannot afford to have Star Wars be a zero because the linkage between Star Wars to Star Wars is the franchise that basically invented merchandising, yeah, video yeah. games, amusement park. Like, they can't have that not be on the big screen for years and years at a time again. I don't think so. I've always said, Brian. I think a lot of it has to do with the essence of what Star Wars was in the beginning for mm -hmm. many of us. And they're telling different stories. Not all of them are hitting. And I've always said, Brian, I'm done with the past. Let's go into yep. the future. The future is kind of hard because you're pretty much starting from scratch in terms of what story you want to tell and how much do you want to emphasize the mythos of the Jedi and, and it has to be it has to the Jedi the force has to be emphasized and that that religion I don't know Brian but that has to be a part of it the further you get away from that I think people are not interested too much in it. So I agree with part of what you said, okay. and I actually kind of disagree with part of what you said. I totally agree about the point about they are too holden to the same old characters and trying to just scratch out one last run with yeah. even characters that we like, like Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan. Like yeah. in retrospect, was it a great decision to do that show? Like, did it add anything to his legacy? I don't know. No. Like, would you want to see another season? I don't know. Um, no. So I think, you know, th the reason why we embrace things like the Mandalorian and, and Andor is because they, they are true to the essence of Star Wars, but they push in interesting new directions. Correct. And so you don't feel the shackles as much of that kind of Skywalker saga. Mm-hmm. But I, where I disagree with you a little bit is I think there is a lot of source material. There's an enormous amount of books. There's an enormous amount of animated content, which is beloved. Why can't more of that be adapted? S set in the movie? future, though? Well, some of the novels, yes. I mean, like the Heir to the Empire series and Thrawn, that comes after Return of the Jedi. Now, some of those works do still have Luke, Han, and Leia in it. So that's I gotcha, problematic, gotcha. I guess. But, gotcha. but even like, you know, like Clone Wars and Rebels, which goes back into the past, there's arcs within those seasons that I just wonder, you 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 can't use that as the inspiration for a two hour film anywhere. Like, I, I don't know. It just, it feels like there's more, more meat there for them to look at. And it almost feels like some of these writers and directors are almost outsmarting themselves, trying to reinvent Star Wars in a way that it doesn't necessarily need to be reinvented. What it, really need just when it really needs is just as you say like an evolution away from the skywalkers yes. it doesn't need to be something completely utterly left field different yes um 
I think they're missing their opportunities and not thinking about the future. And um, they had their opportunities to set some of these things up. Certainly, Grogu is a setup for the future. Perhaps it could be a movie about him and his journey. Who knows, Brian? But I think you have to move forward in that direction, especially with characters that you have now and set them up for the future. And Grogu will possibly be buying. I mean, he's obviously a moneymaker now. Why can't he be in the future? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's the opportunity there. I mean, I think one thing you can do is do that Luke Jedi Academy thing. Yeah, I, that's yeah. the one Skywalker thing that's sitting there. And from there, Brian, you can perhaps, perhaps build your future. Yeah. If you cast an interesting set of pupils and apprentices yeah for sure that's why i'm so fascinated by the ashoka show the show because that's the one that i feel like is trying to do that but it's not trying to do it as a movie unfortunately mm -hmm. but it is trying to do that it's trying to take something that was beloved in animated form and then actually bringing in a character thrawn who was both in the books and in the animated and is something we haven't seen before is still going to have the force it's still going to have jedi like things in it albeit yeah. she's not technically a jedi and we'll see how that goes. I mean, I'm interested to see what the reception is for it and whether people take to it or not. Yeah. But. Yeah, man. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, the Star Wars franchise and it not having a film coming out anytime soon. More cancellations of films other than announcements. Um, where do you see the future of Lucasfilm? I, Tracy and I have discussed this and we think, you know, Filoni and... and uh, Favreau. Favreau will be the co-heads of Lucasfilm. I mean, it just they makes sense. Be. They should be. Yeah. So um, with that, I think perhaps, who knows, Brian, this is the setup for that takeover. Perhaps this is this is no longer, this is no longer, this is no longer. Next thing is Kathleen Kennedy is okay. out and then the announcement and then perhaps future announcements of Star Wars film. It'll be interesting if this is verbatim what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good call. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. I'll be too busy looking good.